The political development of Belize shows that the Belizean people do not want any part of their country to be given to or to be taken by any other country. Their political will is to keep and preserve their national identity and heritage, separate and distinct from other nationalities and heritages. They want to be themselves as a people in the international community. How to do this is the tremendous problem which faces all Belizeans. How to attain this objective in a world where colonies are no longer the order of the day and where the United Nations decolonization program presses metropolitan countries to divest themselves of colonies and lead them to independence. It is a serious challenge to end the claim of Guatemala to Belizean land. The solution is not to exist as a colony. The solution is either to give way to Guatemala's unfounded claim or to advance to a secure independence with all our territory. When we consider the future of Belize in the context of today's world, where colonies are not acceptable to the countries of the Americas and the rest of the world, we should be convinced that Belize cannot continue to be a colony. And even if it could remain as a colony, to do so would be dangerous to the existence as a people. For it would give more time to Guatemala to press its unjust claims to all or part of our land. There are two future possibilities. They are, one, either to become a part of an independent country, or two, to become securely independent. And when we speak about the independence of Belize, we mean a secure and safe independence with all Belizean territory. The policy of the United Kingdom regarding its few remaining colonies is to lead them to independence. This policy has been carried out successfully, and with political will on both sides, it can be done in the case of Belize, and thus save Belize for future generations. Belizeans, who have a sense of national dignity and who love their country, would have no quarrel with this policy of the United Kingdom, because as long as Belize is not independent, it continues to have a second-class standing in the rest of the world. While Belize is not independent, Belize cannot be a full member of the United Nations or a full member of the United Nations bodies and agencies, such as the CEPAL, the Economic Commission for Latin America, or UNCTAD, the United Nations Conference of Trade and Development. Neither can Belize have direct access to financial institutions and other organizations, except in the case of institutions of the Caribbean community. The laws of nature, both spiritual and material, ordain that countries like people should reach their full development in the order of creation. Accordingly, just as a human being grows from childhood to adulthood, so do countries grow from a non-self-governing or colonial status to full and sovereign independence. It is shameful and undignified in this modern age for a people to want to stagnate in colonialism subject to outside masters. It is shameful and undignified for a political party such as our opposition to attempt to turn back Belize to the old days of colonialism when a privileged few enjoyed the benefits and many were deprived of opportunities to better their living standards. Guatemala, which claims unjustly all or a part of Belize, knows that once Belize becomes securely independent, her chances to assert and win her unfounded claims would end in the face of international recognition and support for an independent Belize. In order to avoid losing this claim and in order to maintain a status which helps to promote this claim, Guatemala has instigated and abetted the spread of fear of independence among Belizeans. False arguments are propagated that one, the economy of Belize cannot pay for independence and two, that Belizeans cannot govern themselves. We hear these false arguments repeated by our opposition. Both arguments are false. Because the economy of Belize is viable, 
this is the conclusion of the World Bank. Government collects sufficient revenue to finance its recurrent budget and has surplus of $10 million to finance its capital budget. Other finances, like in the case of any independent country, comes from loans and grants in economic cooperation programs. As regard the other false argument that Belizeans cannot govern, that the self-evident answer is that the people and government of Belize have worked the constitution and have governed themselves these past years with stability, experience, and progress. As a result, we have the attributes of independence, and by now, we should have been independent. In some countries where people struggle for freedom, there is an element of the population which opposes independence for the simple reason that it wants independence only when it is the government. In the case of Belize, this is a short-sighted and selfish policy. It is not in the best interest of our country or its people. This policy of our opposition on the secure independence of Belize is not only a negative policy, but it is a confused policy. It not only seeks to terrorize the people with one scare after another, but like the weather, it changes from time to time. First, it favors independence, then it is against independence and in favor of a moratorium for at least 10 years. Latest shift of policy is independence not right now. The opposition has an affinity, a sameness of policy with Guatemala. Guatemala strives to delay the independence of Belize for the obvious reason that a postponement of independence would give Guatemala more time to strengthen its military might and to subvert the people of Belize. Subversion takes its wicked course as monies and aid from Guatemala support those who oppose the government of the People's United Party and thus, knowingly or unknowingly, support Guatemala's unjust claims to Belize. In addition to giving aid and abetment to the opposition, Guatemala uses the weapon of fear. Such fear is spread by the opposition. Fear that there will be war on Belizean soil if the government gets independence. That Guatemala will invade and Cuban troops will fight. The danger is that Guatemala will invade whether Belize is independent or independent. But there is no arrangement or agreement or understanding that Cuban troops will enter Belize territory. The real enemy to Belizean independence is Guatemala and not Cuba. One wonders if the followers and supporters of the opposition policy do not realize the affinity or sameness of policy of Guatemala and the opposition. Let not the enemies of Belizean independence lull us to sleep in the belief that by postponing the day of a secure independence, we have chosen the safest course. We have not. In the end, such a course can lead only to disaster and destruction. We have seen that in a mistaken attempt to save Belize, those who oppose a secure independence run the risk of losing what they want to save. We have seen that adherence to such an ill-conceived policy would lead us in a new direction that is the wrong direction. To prevent this from happening and to save and safeguard Belize, the People's United Party realizes the serious risk of delaying independence and advocates a policy of secure and safe independence of Belize with all its territory by one of two ways. One, a peaceful negotiated settlement of the Anglo-Guatemalan dispute and or two, a security arrangement. It should be clear to all that the first way a negotiated settlement depends on the agreement of Guatemala, which wants Belizean land. And if land is not ceded, then Guatemala will not agree to a settlement. Thus, Guatemala will delay a settlement in the belief that the longer it takes to reach such a settlement, Guatemala will have more time to build up its military forces and to subvert the Belizean people. In the face of these facts, clearly then the right direction and the correct policy is to keep on struggling and working for a secure and safe independence with all our territory. This means an independence guaranteed by a security arrangement or a military post.
We must also bear in mind that the Belizean people have the final say, either in accepting or rejecting a negotiated settlement by a referendum, which was arranged by the People's United Party, or in mandating the future status of Belize as a non-self-governing territory with all the known risks, or as a securely independent country, or struggling on to obtain a security arrangement that would protect our independence. All right-thinking and patriotic Belizeans should know that in their hearts that the best interests of Belize demand a state of independence. This is the law of nature and the law of nations. With independence, there will be more economic and social development between the attainment of a non-independent country. To save and safeguard Belize for future generations, let us not be stampeded into a senseless fear of a secure independence with all our territory, for we know that the final decision rests with the Belizean people. As a conscientious and courageous people who understand clearly the issues at stake, we must keep on working to safe and secure Belize. We must do so in order to put a stop to the unfounded claims of Guatemala and to attain an independence protected by a security guarantee that will enable us to live as a united, sovereign and independent country, the Central American nation of Belize. With your continued support and with God's help, we shall attain this just objective. As we move forward to the national elections, let us vote PUP all the way.